Hello everyone, welcome to Sweetie Speaks official YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn about constraint in system variable. In case you missed the previous video lectures in this series, which is system Verilog randomization, I request you to please go through that first so that you understand this constraint properly. Let's get started. What is constraint? It is a way to define legal values for a random variable. In the previous lecture, we had seen how you want to declare your variable as random. Random. You can use rand and rand c keywords. And we had also seen some functions in system verilog randomization lecture. We had seen what are different randomization methods, randomization functions. Now, there should be some legal values which you are generating for this random variables. Say, for example, you have a 8-bit variable, but as per your design, some values are not legal. They are reserved. So you should not generate those values in your uh, randomization because they will not give you any legal results. That is why it is very important that you generate only legal values. That's where constraint helps you. It will generate legal values and whatever values you require for your scenarios that you can generate with the help of constraint. We are going to see with an example in detail how this constraint works. Uh, why is constraint used? It will constrain your variables within a range. Say, for example, I want to generate my value in a particular range. Say, address. I have a 8-bit address, but I want to generate only address range up till 1f because as per my test scenario only up till 1f values are valid for my particular test scenario that is why i will generate values only within the range 0 to 1f this is a way uh, this is one way where constraints can help to generate the variables within a particular range next is valid random values for the design like i told there can be some illegal values which you should not generate so to avoid such values generate only legal values that's where your constraint helps then it is much better for your verification because you want to test only within certain ranges only within certain limits only then your randomization is effective if you don't generate legal values or if you don't generate within the required ranges it's of no use your test is of no use that's why this constraint helps you better your verification impact. In system Verilog, uh, there is an inbuilt, uh, whatever simulator you are using, Cadence, Synopsis, whatever simulator you are using, every simulator has inbuilt constraint solver, which resolves these constraints. You, you can have a lot of constraints in your design. And your constraint solver should solve all those constraints and generate the values within the required ranges within the required legal values that is done with the help of constraint solver now there can be certain scenarios in which your constraint solver is not able to solve your constraint or you yourself has no have not given correct constraint we are going to see all such examples also a lot in detail with a lot of examples lot of scenarios in the upcoming lecture so that that this randomization concept you understand end to end in depth that's why we are going like from basics first uh, and we will go till advanced level every topic we are going to cover in advanced level in this uh sweetie speaks official youtube channel don't worry and this content is free for all and if you are very interested to learn verification this channel is for you now you understood the basics of constraint to get a better understanding, we need to see the code and we need to run the code and see the simulation results. Now, let's see a code of constraints. Let us understand this example first. Here, we are going to see constraints in system Verilog. I have a class packet which has three different random variables. Address is rand c, which means it's a cyclic randomization. We had covered about RAND and RANC in detail in a previous video lecture. Please go through it. But in short, RANC stands for cyclic randomization. So it does not repeat value until all val valid values are covered. And then we have 
two random variables, which is data and write. Address is 8 bit, data is 32 bit, and write is just one bit signal. If write is one, it means it's a write transaction. If write is zero, that means it's a read transaction. Now we have a constraint called as valid address, which means I want to generate address which is in valid range. And for my test scenario, I want the address to be from 0 to 1f. That is why I have said address should be less than or equal to 1f. Now, if you remember, we had a system Verilog tutorial series. In case you did not go through it, please go through it. There we discussed that bit is a two-state variable. Two-state variable means it, it can take only two values, 0 or 1. That is why even if I didn't specify the range, the minimum range will be 0 by default. So address can take any value between 0 to 1f because I have said less than equal to 1f. Now I have a module test packet in which I am creating an object of class packet. P1 is my object. I have a class constructor. In case you did not go through system Verilog series, please go through that where we have discussed about class objects, constructors in detail. So th this is where I am creating an object of class packet. I am calling the constructor so that the memory also gets allocated for this class object. Then I am 10 times I am generating a random value for the object P1, 10 times. And I am displaying those values. Now let's run this and see what is the output. Just remember all my bits are randomized. So if you see all the bits are randomized and data is 32 bit, right is one bit i don't have any constraints on data and write address is ran c it means the value should not repeat until all the values are covered and also the value should be within one f let's focus on address c none of the values are repeating as of now because we have only repeat 10 and the values valid values are more than 10 that's why none of the values have repeated and if you can see, it has generated only the val valid values, which is the uh, values which are less than 1f. The maximum value should be 1f, less than equal to 1f. So 1f is the maximum value. It has not crossed that value. This means that I am able to generate the values within the required range. This is how constraint works. In the upcoming lectures, we are going to see a lot more example, even the complex examples. Slowly, slowly, we will advance to the complex example so that you understand it properly. I want to make this understanding easy for you. To stay tuned to such content on VLSI, please subscribe to Sweetie Speaks official YouTube channel. Thank you.